Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a higher washer dryer. It's model number HWD C1200 TX VE U. There's some specs on it, made in China. It looks like a pretty cool machine. It's got like a mirror finish there on the, on the display. It does like washing and drying. Uh, <laughs> smart man. It does washing and drying. You can do a straightforward wash and dry. It's interesting from my point of view because it's got a steel tub, which is kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do it Aussie 50 style, strap it to a pallet, and just see if I can get it to self-destruct. Put in a bit too much weight and just leave it spinning there and just see what happens, see if it falls asunder. It's all metal this one, it must have been quite an expensive machine to make, whether or not it cost a lot being a hire. Aluminium pulley, Gates Micro V belt, which is an expensive belt relative to you know, some some products. It's got a blue concrete stone up here. I don't know why it's painted blue. It just is, I guess. Pressure sensor, some temperature sensors, a little temperature probe there. Maybe that's the element. Don't know. No, it's probably a probe. Uh, mechanical on-off switch. Big toggle switch there for on and off. There's the drawer. The drawer's only short because uh, it's not got much space in behind. Three-way solenoid inlet. One of the things goes over here, which I think is a bit weird because that's where the fan is. I don't know if it sprinkles water on the fan in there or what, and then blows it in the front. I don't I don't know. And I'm not going to find out either. So what I'm going to do is hot wear it and wreck it. So let's get it over on the side and see what's going on. Close that door. Up on the side. Down like that. Oh dear, solid base. Alright, how are we going to get in here? to wire this. The front and sides are, are together and the back is separate. There's an opening there. I'm guessing I can go in through the bottom if I take off the feet. There's a lot of water running out of it which is never a good sign for washing machines. It has been sat out in the rain though. It's just got all this snot on it. Get these feet off and see what we're dealing with. So all this bottom does, apart from soaking up moisture, it's just a sound dampening thing and it's held on with the feet. Never seen that before. In here is the motor, a nice easy access to get at these connectors. There's a big block, looks like concrete in plastic. Because I want to do this kind of stress test where it doesn't jump around, it rather stays attached to the, to the pallet. By taking out the ballast, it means there's less resistance from the machine, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it does really make any sense. That's, that's what my plan is to do. Take out the ballast, get this one out this way by the looks of things. A couple of bolts on the bottom. The kind of washer bolt. And there's another one in up here. Oh, two washers. Okay, so up to my old tricks again. Take off the connector block and forget about it. Two red wires go to the taco on the end. Forget about them. Let's see, you have to ignore this hose. Then we've got a black, a blue, a green, a blue, and a brown. Black goes to the brush here. And on the other side, can I see? It's a blue one, so I think it's this blue. Not to worry though, we can go one way or the other. So I've got to connect the cable from another washing machine probably. Uh, I'll earth it just for fun. Put the power, one of the power cables going to one brush, then going from a coil to a brush. So I don't know which one of the blues is the other brush. So I'll just go from a blue to a blue. I can't see what I'm doing here, but I can feel what I'm doing. So I reckon I'm on the right track. And then I'll take a punt that brown is the other there's a high speed and a low speed coil in here, so we'll take a punt that it's brown. So that should be it. Power into a brush, from a brush to a coil, and from a coil to the other power cable. And that's it. So we'll put a bit of energy through it, a bit of electricity, see what happens. So it'll either go or it won't. It doesn't. Okay, plug it out. I've got my power on. It should go. Oh. that time. Now what's happened there? We lost power in the house I'd say. 
So that was exciting. Let's plug the earth out this time and try and get it to go again. Because it worked, but it just sparked, and I wonder if that commutator bar is a bit shook. I suspect it could be a dud motor, which for washing machine destruction doesn't bode well. Try it again. Okay, so in here, I've got it hooked up to a Variac, kept blowing the fuse. I think this motor's cooked. I think that's probably the problem here. Just watch the commutator bar there. And we lost it, probably blown the fuse inside in the house. Okay, so it didn't actually blow the fuse, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Let's give it a couple of more volts, maybe a hundred. Nothing doing there. Well, I gave up on it out there. Look at this. It's a welling motor. All in Chinese. No, half in Chinese, half in English. You see that? HXGM 21.02. Foshan Welling Washer Motor Manufacturing Co. 50 watts or 500 watts. Yep, let's try and get into the brushes, because I think that commutator ring's burnt out. It may be that new brushes will fix it. If you're wondering what Oxford diffraction is, there's a big box I got that had some really expensive lasers in it. I didn't get the lasers. So there should be, they're down to the end of their life, those brushes, but uh, there should be a bit of spring left in them. That shouldn't be the issue. That one's not binding, so that's half the battle. Let's check the other half. Yeah, this one's, that brush is a dud. So that could be our issue. This brush is just down to the end of its, uh, end of its life. See, there's just nothing, there's not enough meat on it at all. That's it, it doesn't even come out. Uh, it springs, you can see, there's only a couple of millimeters left. I'll find another one. So, the joys of keeping everything, I've got a spare one. Should do it. Here it is. It's got a little tiny bit of life left in it. About as much as the other side. So, let's bung it in and see if we can get it to, get it to play ball. So, they're in. In all seriousness, that was probably all that was wrong. That was probably all that was wrong with the whole machine. So let's just check this continuity. Yeah, that's one brush. And on this one, that's the other brush. So there are the brushes. Next three will be coils and then the taco. So I've got it wired wrong as we stand. So let's pull one off, two off. Let's put this in there. And I've got a video on YouTube on how to wire these things and some of the thoughts and science behind it. So if you're interested in wiring these things and how to control the motor, check out that other video. Right, so this Variac is now live. So you want to keep an eye on the end of this thing here. So the Variac's live. Let's turn it right down to zero. Plug this in. So now the Variac's live and the motor's live. You can see the pointy bit here, and the numbers, not great really, put it like that, 20, 140, oh, there's nothing coming in there, that motor should turn if it's ready to go. blown a fuse with all the antics earlier on. So if we've blown a fuse, the simplest thing to do is just to check each fuse. Check it for continuity. It looks like a dud fuse. Good. Put in a different one. Snap it shut. Yeah, and you see Getting continuity on that fuse, the new fuse, so that's good. Right, very axe back to zero. Let's try again.
So the very X back to zero. Let's, uh, let's get a good look into this commutator now and just see if it's going to spark. So oh, some sparking there on that motor, on the commutator, but like, not an issue. The thing worked. That's really all you care about. I think it was the old one that was sparking more than the new one. But uh, hey ho, that's the way it is. We get it into the machine. There should be enough. So there should be enough uh, life left in it to smash up the washing machine. Excellent. Well then, I'll put this back in the machine, and the next videos you'll see of this machine will be it. Strapped to a pallet, eating bricks. So the motor's back installed, belt's back on. It's got a cast iron spider on the back of it. You don't see that every day. This is quite a heavy duty machine, this HWD C1200 TXVE-U. Got it coming onto the very act just to see if we're all gonna go. So the last thing for me to do is to get this blue ballast off and I uh, don't know if that will make any difference really but with the ballast gone it might vibrate more, it will have less dampening. We'll take that off now and then we'll wrap it up. And another thing, the more I look at this the more broken it is. You see that daylight in there? The rubber door seal is knackered. You see you can get your fingers in there, that whole door seal is completely dead. And the other thing was the suppressor. Whenever I was taking the suppressor out just for keeping for bits, the top was blown off it. So brushes, rubber door seal, the whole thing's knackered. This machine brick is all it's fit for. Thanks for watching. See you later.